My friends, welcome to Venture of Bay. And welcome back to the Review Den. I've been covering online-only racing games in their terminal phase, I guess you could say, and while Need for Speed 2015 is still around, by the time you're watching this, things could be different. So let's look back at one of the more uneven but interesting titles in the NFS Pantheon. This is Need for Speed. And the game gets off to an unusual start right in the name itself. This isn't Road and Track presents the Need for Speed, nor is it a remake of the first game. But EA insisted on calling this a reboot of the entire series. Which is odd, because what exactly is it rebooting? The games had always reinvented themselves every few titles, and previous characters like Eddie and Melissa are mentioned, so it's still a continuous universe. No, if anything, this is probably, honestly, Underground 3. See, 2015 is all about modern tuning and hooning. You have real-world parts, real-world stars, the campaign even progresses through SMS and group chats. It has all the elements of a modern underground, they just really didn't want to call it that for some reason. And it drops you into the fictional city of Ventura Bay, California, where apparently you just nailed a 500-foot drift, brah! It's enough to impress the local talent who take you in as their new found family, and more importantly, introduce you to the game loop. There's the toady, the giant, the mechanic, the party girl, and, uh, Travis. They'll be the ones shepherding you through the five main disciplines of your career. Speed, racing fast and clean. Style, drifting. Build, upgrading your car. Crew, racing with others. And outlaw, police chases. Each teammate sets you up with races for that particular style, which you can handle in mostly any order. Progress through the race trees to eventually meet a real-world icon of that discipline. And while I'm not one for celebrity bait, it is pretty cool to see real-world stars like Ken Block, Magnus Walker, and Shinichi Morohoshi in the game, especially next to your personal cars. Complete the race trees to win their iconic rides and master all five disciplines to become the icon of Ventura Bay. So far, so need for speed. The problem is the gameplay, or at least the gameplay once you get some speed in your cars. See, like Hot Pursuit, or heck, just about any Ridge Racer, the game has two distinct handling models, one where you're in control and one where you're drifting. Under grip, you handle light turns and dodge traffic, while stabbing the brakes puts you on a rail through corners at high speed. Where this style of handling lives or dies is how intuitive, how consistent the drifting is. And yeah, that's where Need for Speed kind of falls apart. Cars feel either too twitchy or too sluggish in their handling, and trying to force a drift with the handbrake often leads to snap oversteer. Now, some cars do work well, but it feels very arbitrary and random. Real-world drifters like the Supra feel like freight trains here, no matter the adjustments, while a Gen 3 Mustang got me through the game like it was on easy mode. Even the pathfinding works against you. 2015 uses a racing line to mark the course, but it often disappears or blends into the road when you need it most, like in Spaghetti Junctions, and the on-screen map is too zoomed in to plan ahead. Now, to be fair, at low to mid-tuning levels, none of this is a problem. Anyone who says the game never works is lying, but once you reach high tuning levels and the hard races, which is most of the campaign, the handling does kind of become a mess. Content can be a little uneven, too. 2015 includes dozens of campaign races for, well, dozens of hours of gameplay, and while most of these are fine, two event types are a bit broken. Drift trains are meant to evoke, I guess, tandem or team drifting. You score points only when inside the pack. Problem is, the AI either drives so slowly you can't drift, or they kamikaze themselves into you and each other. Normally, I hate rubber band logic, but if ever there was a need for it to space everyone out, it's here. You spend more time getting torpedoed by your mates than drifting with them. The other problem is the police. Escaping the heat is a time-honored tradition of need for speed, but here they are notoriously slow. The outlaw tree requires a few police milestones, like dodging roadblocks or whatnot, but the hardest part, and I'm not kidding, is actually keeping a pursuit going. You'll spend more time coasting and waiting for cruisers to catch up than on the throttle here. 
The garage game is kind of limited, too. EA formed Speedhunters as its own in-house car culture mag, and sure, they have some cool stuff, but you're at the mercy of their interests. If their current obsessions are giant-bodied air-cooled Porsches and 1970 Volvos, well, that's what you're getting now. And since there's a focus on real-world parts, cars have very limited customization. The original Undergrounds used real parts for inspiration, but you could apply them to any car. Not hugely realistic, but it meant whatever you picked, you could turn it into a showstopper. Here, you might be limited to a single body kit, depending on your luck. And I get it, tuning culture has moved on, now it's more about stance and million dollar Liberty Walk builds, but I do kind of miss the days of fabricating and customizing your own race cars or show cars. Now, all of this complaining might make you think that NFS is a disaster, but the thing is, when it works, it is really fun. 2015 brings back the atmosphere of, oh my gosh, nighttime illegal street racing, and it rocks. Now, blowing your savings on a car that can't handle is frustrating, but with a playable ride, there's nothing like blasting down rain-slicked roads or nailing a perfect drift. It's great when it's great, it just forces you to play within a very limited rule set. And it certainly looks the part. 2015 takes place entirely at night, but unlike the stylized cities of Bayview or Palmont, Ventura Bay is gritty and believable. It's run down, it has industry and strip malls, everything's done with a realistic tone right down to the street lamps. I love that the devs didn't go for something like Vegas or some dystopian slums, this is just a middle of the world city you might have driven through or grown up in. The cars look great, no surprise there, and Ghost Games made sure they blended naturally into the environments, both rendered and live action. And yes, the full motion videos are pretty legendary. Even from someone who defends racing game stories, these are pretty cringe, but they're a small price to pay and you'll get back to racing before you know it. For all its ups and downs, I'd normally call Need for Speed a good game. Not a great game, a flawed game. It brings back car culture and a more grounded style of street racing, no secret agent or Michael Bay zaniness. The handling gets messy at high speeds, but it works with the right car. However, we can't avoid the elephant in the room, this is an online-only game, and a pretty intrusive one at that. I think EA really wanted to push the social media aspect of the game, with photos constantly being uploaded at scenic spots and after races for players to upvote or whatever, but it's more of an irritation having griefers ram you during campaign races. You can reload the game in solo mode, but this requires another long loading time which often crashes. On top of that, EA seems to reset its servers for maintenance every couple hours. I was sad to lose the crew, but at least Ubisoft had some working infrastructure. And speaking of back-end issues, if you're interested in Need for Speed while it's still up, be very wary of the PC version. The controller setup is borderline broken by default, with the game pulling gamepads as both wheel and pad setups simultaneously. Clearing inputs for the wheel didn't work, others suggested unplugging the keyboard or replacing some DLLs, but for all the frustration I just went to the trusty PS4. And this is coming from someone who spends too much time getting cranky old games to run. If you know the NFS fandom, you'll know the Undergrounds hold a very special place in players' esteem, and 2015 could have been the follow-up we wanted, even under a different name. Smooth out the handling, fix the AI, maybe add some variety. At the very least, it kept the car culture-focused titles alive, but that online-only requirement makes for a real gut punch. What do you think, though? Was this a boring misstep or a real gem held on a tight leash? Should air-cooled Porsches have 10-foot wide asses, and is Travis my punishment for joking about the male gaze? Feel free to leave your thoughts and comments below, and thank you all so much for watching. I'll be back with another review, and be sure to keep going, because you are worth it.